Hello everyone, I'm Kira, a romantic ace, and this is just me testing out with a recording whether everything is going to behave itself with OBS and with my new method of connecting my phone to my computer. So we're not using Reflector anymore, we are trying a different app that unfortunately is going to show us ads every 30 minutes, but it's a way of getting this done, and if it works well, I may indeed purchase um, the upgrades so that we don't get ads anymore. But for today, I'm going to be streaming one of Choice Games' flagship fantasy novels, not a romance novel, um, although it does have a romantic subplot. Unfortunately, it's not very romantic at the moment. But I'm on book three, and I've been playing this for points, so we're going to see how this goes. So today, we are going to be playing The Crown and the Flame, book three. Um... If you want spoilers, keep watching. If you don't, then uh, walk away now, I suppose, because you're going to get a bunch of them. So we play variously, typically as two different characters, Kenna Reese of Stormholt, now Queen Kenna Reese, and her childhood friend and orphan Dominic. Um, they grew up together in the castle, blah, 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 childhood friends turned lovers, if you play the game a certain way. Um, Kenna's family and most of the rulers of the Five Kingdoms were murdered by King Luther, who wanted to, you know, take over the world as villains do. And so book one was spent overthrowing um, his son, whom he left in charge. And book two was spent overthrowing him, and more specifically his daughter, who was the last uh, stronghold of his power in the Five Kingdoms while he was overseas doing whatever people do, I suppose, when they want to take over the world. Meanwhile, her childhood friend Dom, who stayed behind in the castle, discovered that he has fire magic powers. And so you spent book one trying to figure out just what they were and how to use them. You meet a woman from a mountain tribe who has the same powers. And so there's this, you know, wonderful moment as you usually have of, you know, oh my goodness, you have the same powers as I do. And, and she eventually at the end of book one is like, you should come train with me. And Dom says, no, I need to stay with Kenna because I love her, I suppose. And so then book two starts off very quickly. It becomes apparent that Dom's going to need training. And so Kenna and Dom split up. Dom goes up to the mountains to be trained. Kenna goes around trying to oust King Luther and his lackeys. And then at the end of book two, they meet back up. And that's your grand finale battle against Luther. Now book three has begun. Luther has dropped a bombshell. He came running back from across the sea not to fight her, but because he was being routed by the Iron Empire, who are the Five Kingdoms' long-time enemies. So at this point, by Chapter 6, Kenna has gone to the Iron Empire, where the Empress has offered to parley with her. Um, her champion, her loyal bodyguard, has been killed in a tournament under false pretenses. Because, of course, you get to this empire and everything looks wonderful and they've got so much technology and everyone seems so happy. Well, as you know, these things tend to turn out, this woman is a raging despot who murders her own people, which is awesome. One life a day is her price to continue ruling over these people and quote unquote keeping them happy. So we have run back to the Five Kingdoms where we plan to um, just prepare for her coming. But in the meantime... At the end of book two, Dom was captured by this diabolical, scientific mad woman who has now revealed that she plans to basically cleanse the world and, you know, kind of kind of a Thanos type thing. You're either gonna you're either gonna follow me, you're gonna submit, or you're going to die. So we've got him enthralled to her. She's mind controlling him. She's trying to use his fire magic to take over the world herself. So Kenna now has two enemies to worry about. And one of them is her best friend. And if you play your cards right, love her. So with that, we are in fact going to get started with chapter six. Chapter six, The Secrets of Fedoria.
So we are now playing as Raydan, who is one of Kenna's, um, Kenna's associates. He is a spy from the kingdom of Aurelia. He was born in Lycos. His sister is the queen of the Lycos underworld. And he is, he is one of those assassin types where you only see him if he wants you to see him, etc., etc. Um, so we are, we are now playing as Raydan. So it says, with Kenna leading an expedition to confront Hex in Aurelia, you find yourself traveling in the opposite direction, toward the kingdom of Fedoria. With you is a small force of Stormholt soldiers, as well as a most unlikely traveling companion... <sighs> Radon says, good morning, Val. Val, who is a barbarian um, uh, mercenary whom we picked up in book one, is now one of our friends and um, almost bodyguards, does not like Radon. He's, he's too much of a priss for her, which is going to make this very interesting. So Val, startled by Radon's, Radon, says, gah! Raydan, I swear by every god you hold dear if you don't stop sneaking up on me. A thousand apologies. I shall endeavor to walk more loudly in your presence. Val turns back to the airship controls, muttering to herself. After a moment, I bet you were you wish you were going to help Aurelia right now, it being your home and all. So, are you doing all right? A twist of anguish grips your chest, but you brush it aside with practiced ease. I trust Kenna and the others to handle the situation. Besides, we are needed elsewhere. Guess so. I'm gonna regret saying this, but for what it's worth, I'm glad you came along. Radan says, Valentina, are you being nice to me? Val says, and now I'm regretting it. Just shut up and tell me about Fedoria. You've been here before, right? I have. Fedorians are, and we have the two options. So this is, it's a, it's basically choose your own adventure. So our two options are very learned or somewhat colorful. Somewhat colorful sounds a little unflattering. So I'm going to say very learned. Inan, the capital city, is home to the largest library in the Five Kingdoms. I hope that on certain days, the li I hear that on certain days, the library is open to the public, and royal scholars will provide free reading lessons to all who ask. Oh boy, a whole kingdom of know-it-alls. You'll be right at home. You smile at Val's attempted insult, causing her to scowl and mutter to herself again. You'll soon have the opportunity to make your own assessment. Can't wait. Your airship glides below the clouds, and Val guides it toward an empty field outside the city. Upon arriving at the palace gates, you're greeted by a couple of brightly decorated soldiers. Welcome, travelers, to the Grand Palace of Inan. May I ask the purpose of your visit? That is that is that is quite colorful. I I have to say that that um that assessment by Raydan that they were somewhat colorful may have been an understatement. See, we've we've encountered the Kingdom of Aurelia before, which if you can guess from the name is is basically like um it's it's basically a city of gold. And so now, now here we have this Fedorian soldier who is very clearly wearing like some kind of painted or like powder coated armor. This is, this is something else. Okay. Anyway, may I ask the purpose of your visit? Raydan says, we are here at the behest of Her Majesty Kenna Reese of Stormhold. The Fedorian soldier says, Kenna Reese. My word, I've heard such remarkable stories about her. Did she really defeat the Blood King single-handedly? Another Fedorian soldier says, I heard she cut off his nose and now wears it as a necklace. Another, this, another Fedorian soldier says, Really? How dreadful! Because we do have female soldiers in this and it's considered not to be an anomaly, which I really like about these stories. So Val says, 
I'm going to start cutting off noses if you don't let us talk to whoever runs this joint. Fedorian soldier says, The queen is already on her way out, and you don't have to be so rude about it. I, I picture these people as, like, very dandified if they're going to go around, like, dressed like this. This is, this is special. So, the palace doors swing open, and a primly dressed young woman emerges, surrounded by a retinue of guards and courtiers. Orin Amanth says, Hello, my name is Orin Amanth. I love this. She's like she's like little and nerdy. It's it's cute. Uh, Queen Orin, actually. Sorry, I'm not really used to the title. You look Orin up and down, observing the corner of a book protruding from her skirt pocket and black ink stains under her fingernails. So anytime something's important, it underlines it in red, usually. Radon says, I must say, I've never met a queen who was also... I should say, an artist or a scholar. She's clearly a scholar. Queen Orin says, oh, How did you... Uh, honey, look at yourself. For like five seconds, we're in like some kind of medieval fantasy and you're wearing like little horn-rimmed glasses and running around with a book. I mean, you may as well advertise yourself as like Belle or something because that's clearly what you are. So she says, How did you... Orin follows your gaze to the ink stains under her fingernails. She blushes. Oh, drat. I washed my hands twice before I came out here. Raidan says, it's barely noticeable. I simply make a habit of seeing what others do not. So when you make a good choice, it'll sometimes give you legend points. Uh, previously, what you got were um, either prestige or power points, and so you got prestige if you were Kenna, you got power if you were Dom. Now they've combined those, so what's now covered up by the crown and the flame at the top of the screen, that's your, that's your meter for how much that you have. And the more legend points you get, the more likely you are to be able to make um, some choices down the line that will help you out significantly. So Radon says, it's barely noticeable. I simply make a habit of seeing what others do not. Queen Orin says, like the great investigator. Uh, excuse me? Oh, sorry, you, you don't know who that is, of course. He's a handsome, observant protagonist in a story I'm reading. I, I don't know why I said handsome. Uh, never mind. Mm -hmm. I know why you said handsome, Orin. I know I'm probably not what you expected. My twin brother was supposed to inherit the throne, but, well... Oh, gee, I wonder what happened. Ah, Prince Tevan. Queen Kenna spoke very highly of him. I'm very sorry for your loss. So, one of the first premium choices, so some of these do cost money in the books, was actually the option to save Tevan's life um, when everyone in the Five Kingdom was, was killed. And of course, if you save Tivan's life, then he would become your ally and you'd get more army. But also, it appears you would have spared this poor woman from losing her twin brother, which is a wonderful kick in the gut. By the way, these books do like to do that, so um, be, be on the lookout for that. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. We're grateful to have you here. Unfortunately, much of our army was lost during the fight to reclaim Inan from King Luther's forces. We've bolstered our numbers through recruitment, but the new recruits are mostly young aristocrats and artisans untrained in the arts of war. Yeah, well, when, you know, most of your army gets obliterated in war, that does tend to be what happens. So all that stands between your kingdom and the Iron Empire is a bunch of spoiled noble brats? Val, Val has probably completely written off Fedoria at this point. She probably figures they're just going to, like, tip themselves into oblivion because I, I can't say I blame her. If you're, if you've like completely annihilated your entire military and no one, like there's probably not even that many people left around to train people, it, it, you're screwed. You're going to need some really powerful allies, which by the way, Kenna just so happens to be. Ha! I believe what Val meant to say is that we're happy to help in any way we can, including training your new recruits. Right, Val? Hey, if this means I get to spend all day making these rich dandies sweat, then I'm more than happy to help. 
Val leers at the nearby soldiers who shift uncomfortably in their gilded armor. Excellent. We have no way of knowing how soon the Iron Empire will arrive, but it's safe to assume that it'd be sooner than we'd like. And since they're coming, we must fortify your borders or coastlines. Go with the coastline. Yes. Okay. Once Azura's army, Azura being the Empress of the Iron Empire, crosses the ocean, she'll have to go through f either Fedoria or Abanthus in order to invade the other kingdoms. And we're a much easier target than Luther's stronghold. I'm afraid so. We must keep our eyes on the sea so that Azura's ships don't take us by surprise. This will be like no battle you have fought before. The Iron Empire's strength lies in more than its superior numbers. I wish you guys could hear the music on this, by the way. Their their background music is actually quite lovely, and it's been getting stuck in my head. And I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Whatever do you mean? Well, for starters, the Empress can shoot lightning bolts out of her hands. So yeah, um, Dom has fire magic. We also have one other character who has fire magic. And um, apparently this woman can, yeah, shoot freaking lightning bolts out of out of her hands. It's it's fantastic. Um, also very scary. But she also can, like, suck the life force out of people with this lightning, which I feel like you don't need to do. I feel like you can just kill people, but that's supposed to be why you've got the the requirement of the sacrifice, is that she like, she's basically like an energy vampire and she drains your power, and it's awesome, and I feel like this is going to cause problems when she comes and tries to drain the life forces of people who did not consent to this. Did you say lightning bolts? <laughs> poor, poor Orange. She's she's gonna pass out, this poor little thing. Yup. Big ones. But that's fascinating. Oh, I've, re I've read about fish that can produce a small electric charge, but nothing like what you describe. Yeah, it's less fun when you're on the receiving end. We experienced this power in rather close quarters. The hell you did! Radon, were you there? I forget if you were there. Maybe you weren't there. No, you weren't there. Or no, you were there. You were there. It was two others who stayed on the ship. Never mind. Okay, so you did experience this power in rather close quarters. That's right, because you were knifing people in the throat, as you do. I do not know if we've seen the full extent of her abilities, and I cannot begin to guess how one might defend against them. Actually, I might know a way. The Enon Library contains books that are centuries old, and some speak of a time when all sorts of magic was common in the, were common in the Five Kingdoms. Because, yeah, pretty much as soon as Dom started shooting fireballs off his hands, everybody was like, holy shit, we've never seen anything like that. Magic is clearly not, like, a commonplace thing, at least at the moment. <gasps> Do these books say how such magic can be countered? I, I may be misremembering, but I seem to recall a reference to something called anti-magic, which is, you know, clearly important. Your heart quickens. That sounds promising indeed. I like how everybody's facial expressions change, but like, it's it's only like the mouth and the eyes and like nothing else moves. So their mouth just gets like way too big for their face. It's wonderful. If you need, I mean, if you would like some assistance in the library, uh, perhaps I could um, you, Oren, honey, you think he's cute. Just, it, it's okay. It's okay. He's, he's made himself attractive. That's what he does. Your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Val, you'll be fine training the army without me. Oh, you, you cad, you absolute cad. This poor little girl, she looks like she's about 15. I don't know how old Prince Devon was, but she looks like she's about 15. And you're clearly not 15. So, you absolute cad. Val looks from Oren's blushing face to yours, raising an amused eyebrow. Yeah, Val knows what's up. Val Val is wonderful. Um, Val is, uh, she, <laughs> she's got a bead on what Radon's uh, potential plans are. Oh, I'm gonna have a great time. Just try not to get too distracted in there, yeah? I'll do my best, but 
It can be difficult to stay focused when there are so many interesting tomes to read. Uh, Oren, sweetie, she wasn't talking about the books. J Val, it, Val's not talking about the books, honey child. Oh, black hell, she's serious. The cursing in this, by the way, is wonderful. The references to the hells. There's. I hope we see it while we're playing today. There's one of my favorite curses um, that I... It, it, it just makes me chuckle every time I see it. <clears throat> Please lead the way, your majesty. So scene change. You follow Orin through a pa pair of tall golden doors. Gentle lamplight flickers across the spines of countless books. No, seriously, the, the background music is lovely. I'm going to have to figure out how to get this ported in through my new method because this is making me sad. Welcome to the Grand Library of Inan. It's beautiful. I feel as though I've come home. That's how I feel about it, too. Much as I would like to lose myself in these shelves. Yeah, yeah, the shelves. That's what you want to lose yourself in. Uh-huh. We do have a mission. Shall we start with the history section? Yes, that seems the logical place to begin this way. We have another brainy character, by the way. He's like a young kid um, whom I am now going to ship with Oren instead of Radon because um, I think that they would make a wonderful, smart, dorky babies. So Oren, you haven't met him yet, but I hope to God that I get the chance to like shove you into the arms of our other resident nerd because you belong together. <clears throat> You follow Oren up one of the delicate spiral staircases. I don't believe I've ever seen so many books in one place. It's wonderful, isn't it? Finding a particular book can take time, though. I, I hope you don't mind. Hmm, yeah, no, I don't think he minds. Why would I mind? I relish any chance to spend time with... And we're going to get a choice here. I should say, such a beautiful woman... Or a good book or 12. Hmm. How much of a cad do I want right on to be? <sighs> I really, I really feel like she's too young for him. I really do. And that creeps me out because of stuff in my own past. So, uh, plus she's going to think we're cute anyway, even if we say like a good book because like books are her thing. So... Um, we're gonna we're gonna go with a good book. Be be a good man, Raiden. A good book or twelve. I'm the very same way. Sometimes I wish I could spend all day reading. How fortunate we have an excuse to do that very thing. Orin scans the shelf for a moment, pulling down a book for you. Here, this is one of my favorite historians. His prose is beautiful, almost like poetry. Thank you. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy the book, all right. The two of you begin reading together in companionable silence. A while later, you find yourself engrossed in a book of mythology. The would-be queen traveled to the end of the world, to the place where land and sky met. She reached up into the sky, grasping for the power that ran through it like a great river. The gods of sky and land warned the would-be queen, the power was more than a mortal could bear. It would burn away her heart and leave her a hollow thing. Oh, that sounds familiar. Oh! You've found something? Not what we're looking for, just interesting. This book is a record of several Fedorian noble lines. There's mention of a young lord marrying a... Well, here they call her a fire witch. Oh, fire witch, eh? I, I beg your pardon? Orin holds open the book, showing you a drawing of a young woman with dark hair and a man who looks strikingly familiar. So here we have the Book of no Fedorian Nobility, which we're going to examine. <gasps> that man looks just like Dominic. And that woman has the same fire flame-shaped brand on her chest. <gasps> oh dear, could it be that Dom is descended from royalty? Probably. We're going to have to have a reason for him to marry Kenna, after all. Orin squints at the words written underneath the drawing. Lord Arden Alcantar of Faril and his wife Idara, family name unknown. What happened to them? It's a sad story, but I don't think it has anything to do with anti-magic. Orin closes the book and reaches up to return it to the shelf. 
Could it be... Could it be... Could the people in that drawing be Dominic's parents? I don't know. What are the timelines like, dude? Uh, Dom's maybe, like, 20, 25? There's been, been like, two years since the total start of the story. Two, three years since the total start of the story. So I'd probably go with, at this point, Dom's probably, like, 26 or something would be reasonable for what he and Kenna have been put through. All right. So in 10 seconds, we're going to get an ad. So we're just going to sit here um, so that we don't get interrupted in the middle of, say, a, a critical decision. Okay, now we can close it. Sorry about that. So we can read the book. This is prompting us that we're going to get a, a premium choice here in a second. So read the book to learn the story of Dom's parents and why infant Dom was abandoned on the steps of Stormholt. So we've, I mean, this is already what we needed to know. We know, even if nobody else knows, that these are Dom's parents. Um, but, yep, we're, okay, so when it's... Um, when something is highlighted in gold like this and you can see the, the little diamonds have popped up down there, that means you have to pay real money for it. You can earn these diamonds. You earn about two per chapter, roughly, but it's not enough. Most of these cost, like, on the order of 15 to 30, depending on how premium the choice is. So we're not going to learn about Dom's parents. Rayvon, that's none of your business, okay? Let Orange shelve it. We can always come back. We can always be like, yo, Dom, go to Fedoria. There's a book about your parents. Silently, you watch as Oren slides the book back into its place on the shelf. I'm sure she keeps this place organized. She'll probably know where it is. She said it was a sad story. Perhaps it is better if Dominic never knows. After another long hour of research, Oren lets out a dejected sigh. I found several references to magic and anti-magic, but no reputable scholar seems willing to admit they're anything more than folklore. But... I just remembered that the library does have an extensive collection of ancient artifacts. Perhaps our search will yield more fruit there. In the ancient artifacts section, you wander among glass cases full of old broken objects, masks and scrolls, reliquaries, and strange, beautiful stones. Half of these are not even labeled. Enough mysteries here to last a lifetime. A small book catches your eye, its leather cover cracked with age. Gently, you remove the book from its case and page through. Look here. These diagrams seem to show a figure negating magical attacks. Really? Let me see. Oren flips through the next several pages, which are full of an unintelligible script. It's all in ancient Erythi. No one's spoken that language in centuries. I might be able to pick out a few words, but... You study the text, and something tugs at your memory. I've seen this before. So now we're going to get a flashback. Azura, who is the Empress of the uh, um, Iron Empire, remember, gestures to an ancient carving over the balcony door. So this is from, I think, chapter one. She says, It says, For every life, a purpose. So ancient Erythi is not extinct after all. You turn to the back cover and see a small pocket sewn into the leather. <gasps> There's something inside. There is a strange amulet inside, which we are now going to examine. Orin holds the amulet up. You notice how the flaws within the stone seem to bend and fracture the light. This is no stone I'm familiar with. Yet another riddle for us to ponder. Drat these riddles! If we don't find some answers soon, I'll, I'll be very cross. Oh, oh, honey, she's too young to curse. Oh, I'm so glad we didn't have Raiden hit on her. You guys, she's so little. She can't even curse. Even your, even the guy that I plan to put you with can curse. You let out a chuckle, causing Orin to blush. Perhaps we should give ourselves a bit of rest. I'm sure Val will be interested in hearing what we've discovered so far. I'm sure Val doesn't give a shit what we've discovered so far, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice thought. It's not, sure, sure, we'll go tell Val. Okay. Oren nods, and the two of you make your way out of the library. And now, we are now playing as Val. So, 
You sit slouched on the front steps of the palace, watching scores of Fedorian soldiers try and arrange themselves into ranks in the courtyard. Oh, come on, guys. It's a straight line. Come on now. That's it. I'm going to go take a nap. Call me when they're done. It, just stand in the line, y'all. It's not that hard. Beside you, one of the Stormholt soldiers you brought along gives a snort of laughter. <laughs> what? You thought teaching military discipline to Fedoria's noble sons and daughters was going to be easy? Who said anything about discipline? I'm just here to teach them how to fight. The Fedorian soldier says, uh, Sir, why exactly is this mercenary teaching us at all? Is she even an officer? Oh, oh, oh this isn't going to end well. Listen here, you gilded twit. I should say, I fought Iron Empire soldiers, or keep talking and I'll make you eat that helmet. Hmm. Okay. Val's kind of a hothead. It's true. But it's also true that she's fought Iron Empire soldiers, and that's not nothing. Um, Val, we should really be nice to these people. They're our allies. Be patient with them. They're trying. I fought Iron Empire soldiers. And how is that different from fighting anyone else? Oh, they're, they're going to get an education. Maybe if you shut your mouth for two seconds, you'd find out. What? Why, I... I will not stand here and be spoken to with such insolence. I'll have you know my father is a baron. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Oh, well, in that case... You stand, dusting yourself off, and step down into the courtyard. Oh, it's going to go down. What's your name, Mr. Baron's son? Oh, I, I was coding this person as female. Oh, well. Eh. They're... <laughs> they don't have to be female to be... Or they don't have to be male to be a son. Okay? Okay. Claudius Umad III. Oh, oh, God. Junior is one thing, but any time you get to thirds, you know the family is way too pretentious for your own good. Oh my god, oh my god. The third. Claudius Umad the third. Well, Claudius, you think I've got nothing to teach you? So, we have two options, two of which are take a swing at me. So you can see one of them costs diamonds, um, the other one costs prestige. So basically, if you don't have enough prestige, you can, you can pay diamonds. Right now, it just got covered up, but we do have 26 prestige, so we have the option to choose take a swing at me. Then why don't you leave is obviously not the correct choice. Won't really get you very far. So we're going to say, take a swing at me. And Claudius says, I, what? Val says, take a swing at me. Unless you're scared. Claudius sputters indignantly, drawing his sword. The other soldiers move aside, letting him through to the front of the crowd. Very well. Someone ought to teach you to respect your betters. Oh, okay. You step forward to meet him, cracking your neck and swinging your arms to limber up. You don't bother to unholster your flail. Yeah, by the way, she uses a, a, a giant flail. It's hilarious. Val says, all right then, lavender man. Teach me something. Claudia springs forward. You step to the side, smirking as his graceful fencer's lunge carries him right past you. I'm going to kick this guy. So we have right in his stupid face, in his shiny ass, or in the family jewels. Oh, Val. Val, honey. Just, mm, no. Kick him. I really don't want you to kick him anywhere. But if you're going to kick him somewhere, I'm going to say kick him in his ass and just like send him tumbling. Kick him in his shiny ass. You wind up and plant your boot firmly in Claudius's backside. Claudius says, What? Claudius stumbles forward, trips, and goes sprawling to the ground. Of all the undignified, is this a duel or a tavern brawl? Dude, what the fuck do you think war is? War is not a duel, dude. There's gonna be people, like, cutting your hamstrings and shit on the battlefield. God. If you need to ask that question, you've already lost. Before Claudius can stand, you plant a knee in his back, twisting one of his arms up behind him. Ah! My arm! You're going to break my arm! That'd be a little counterproductive, so Val, please don't break his arm. Oh, sounds like someone's ready to apologize. Oh, I'm sorry! Please accept my humblest- Ow! Apology accepted. You release Claudius, and two of his friends help him hobble to a nearby bench. 
Scattered whoops and applause ring out from the gathered soldiers. Ha! About time someone showed that stuffy lout the hard side of their boot. Will you show us that move, milady? Oh, oh, I'm gonna guess Claudius is, like, not that popular. <laughs> My stars are all mercenaries so fast. Hitting on the teacher is not gonna help you here. So we get the alpha dog achievement plus um, some army points, which will supposedly help you in battles. Not even close. I'm kind of legendary. All right, then. The rest of you watch closely. You run through a simple routine of attacks and blocks with a Stormholt soldier, then set the rest of the soldiers to working on it in pairs. Havati! I, I love these people. The second soldier fumbles her practice sword, nearly dropping it. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't usually, I mean, I've, 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 I've never fought anyone before. Oh my god, we're all gonna die. I, uh, <clears throat> never would have guessed. <laughs> Maybe mother was right. All I'm good for is dancing at balls and <laughs> looking <laughs> pretty. Hey, there's no rule against looking pretty and doing lots of violence. I'm living proof. So we have actually gotten Val to like dress up fancy and there's actually two opportunities for you to do this, but one of them you have to pay for. So she does clean up nicely. Um, I'm just saying. Just remember, fighting is either basically the same as dancing or the only thing between you and a horrible death. Wow, Val, you're a very up person. Look, again, be nice. Be nice to these poor people. They are trying, and this woman is, like, trying so hard and clearly disappointed in herself. Like, be nice, Val. Be nice. Fighting is basically the same as dancing. The, like, dancing? How? You just need to learn the steps and practice them. Other than that, it's all about timing. Timing! Come on, let's try that again. One, two, three... One, two, three. Oh my god, there's a battle waltz now. This is wonderful. You run through the movements again, counting off the rhythm. A few minutes later, the soldier manages to score a hit on your shoulder. <gasps> oh! Oh, I did it! I hit you! <laughs> oh my god, she's so excited. So you get a legend point for that, for teaching her. Nice one! Also, ow. <gasps> Excuse me, milady mercenary? Milady mercenary, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, not loving the title. It's just Val. As you say, uh, uh, Val, I was wondering, what is the best method for attacking an opponent in armor? Um, the best method is don't hit them in the armor. I've, I've, I've only ever fought in duels, I'm afraid. I'm concerned that this weapon won't be very effective against those Iron Empire chaps. Oh, oh dear, those Iron Empire chaps. Okay, all right. He holds up a thin rapier with a light blade and a wickedly sharp point. Oh, dude, you can find all kinds of chinks in armor with that. Like, you don't even know. Val says, with that weapon, you should aim for the heart where the frickin' armor is. Yeah, right. Or the joints where, where the armor is. Yeah, no, Val would know to go for the joints. That gets you a legend point because you got it right. Armor from the Iron Empire is built for speed and maneuverability, which means more weak points that a thin blade like this can exploit. Aim for the throat, underarm, waist, or anywhere you see a gap in the armor plates. Splendid! I'll do just that! Thank you for your help today, Val. Can't wait to give those Iron Empire brutes a taste of Fedorian gusto! Yeah, the, mm, gusto is a word for, for what you guys have, yeah, mm-hmm. Happy to help. After a few hours of practice, the Fedorians are actually starting to resemble something like a real army. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> few hours and we've just made this army. This is one of the problems with this, with this series and kind of with stories in general. You have real timeline problems. It's, it, it's rough. It's rough. The doors to the palace swing open, revealing Raydan and Orin. Raydan nods to the nearest or to the nearby garden. Keep them practicing, will ya? Whatever you say, milady mercenary. Oh, Val's never gonna live this down. You give the soldier a playful rap on the helmet, then turn to follow Raydan and Orin. You join Orin and Raydan in the center of some fancy hedges, taking a seat on the lip of a huge gaudy fountain. 
find anything useful in that world-renowned library of yours? Uh, perhaps. This book appears to contain instructions for several spells that could interrupt or negate magical attacks. Hells, that sounds like exactly what we need to kick Azura's alabaster Ah! Unfortunately, neither of us can decipher the words. Take a look. Radan shows you a page of meaningless scribbles. Great. All that time in the library and the best you've got is a book you can't read? It's not our fault nobody's spoken ancient Erythi in a thousand years. No one in the five kingdoms, at least. Besides, that's not all we found. Take a look at this. Here's the weird amulet, and apparently Val says, Ooh, shiny. <laughs> she doesn't know. Pretty. What's it for? It was inside the book, so it must be related to anti-magic in some way. We have a few hypotheses, but without rigorous testing, there's no way to... You snatch the amulet out of Oren's hand and slip the chain over your head. Wait! We don't know how that artifact works. It could be dangerous. Yeah, Val does not have much of a concept of self-preservation. She talks like she does, but she acts like she does not. So, yeah. Cool off, spy master. It's not even doing anything... Whoa! I take it back. It is definitely doing something. Oh boy. Now Val is sparkly. Oh, she's gonna love this. Fascinating! May I... Hesitantly, Oren reaches out to touch the strange energy swirling around you. Slightly resistant to pressure, and a temperature slightly below ambient. <gasps> I saw diagrams similar to this in the book! I think... I think it's a shield against magic. Now that would be useful. With the protection amulet, Val will be immune to all magical attacks. Take the amulet for a major edge against Azura in the final battle. Are we going to pay for this? I think not. Nah, let Orin keep it. She's definitely, like, if it comes down to her, Orin's going to be the one who dies first if she doesn't have the amulet. So yeah, let Orin keep it. Reluctantly, you remove the amulet and hand it over to Oren. Probably better not to mess with this until we know for sure how it works. That's very cautious of you, Val. Don't get used to it. If you'll excuse me, there is some business I should attend to before the day is through. Oh, please, don't let us keep you. Shall we begin our research anew tomorrow? Here, research... I would like that very much. Until then. Oren curtsies and hurries back toward the castle. Radan watches her go until he notices you smirking at him. What? So, did you spend all that time just researching, or...? The air suddenly shakes with the booming of huge bells. Panicked shouts cut through the din, and you see a messenger sprinting toward the castle. Enemy sighted! Enemy ships on the horizon! What? Great. No way! They couldn't be here already! You there! How many ships? How fast are they approaching? Scores! Hundreds! Screaming tortoise-like winged horrors! Oh, gods! Oh, great. We're all gonna die. Go tell the queen. Now! The messenger salutes, dashing up the castle steps. You stroke the handle of your flail, gritting your teeth. Burning, black, sodding hells. No way this army is ready for a fight. Do we run? There's no time. Listen. You shut your mouth. Wow. That's, that's a first for Val. And hear screams from the direction of the docks. The clash of steel on steel. The thunder of thousands of boots coming your way. What do we do? We improvise. Raydan turns and shoves you into the fountain. You hit the waist-deep water with a splash, sinking to the bottom of the basin. <laughs> Above, you hear distorted shouts as blurry white forms converge on Raydan. So these are Iron Empire soldiers. We claim this city in Azura's name! Best you lay down your weapons, friend. We do not wish to kill you. And I do not wish to die. The soldiers march Raydan up the steps of the castle, and you cautiously poke your head above the water. Raydan, you bloody stupid idiot! 
Not long after, you escape the fountain and find a hiding spot among the hedges. From your vantage point, you watch as Raydan and the other nobility are being forced to kneel before Azura. Queen Arryn, I am sorry that we had to meet this way. I have long admired Fedoria from afar. Swear fealty to me now, and I promise that no harm will come to your people. I... <clears throat> Orin glances to the side, where Joran holds Raydan firmly by the shoulder. So Joran was the Empress's champion, whom our champion defeated in, in that uh, tournament. And he's still salty about the fact that he did not get to die at the end, you know, for, for his Empress, I guess. Raydan is silent. Queen Orin. I swear my loyalty to the Empress Azura, who shines brightest. Very good. That will suffice for now. Joran, please make them comfortable in the dungeons until my clerks can draft the formal papers. Yes, your radiance. As Joran marches the prisoners into the palace, Raydan looks directly at you and cocks one eyebrow ever so slightly. In silence. Move along, prisoner. Joran prods Raydan with the butt of his spear, and the prisoners continue their march inside toward the dungeons. Great. Looks like Val's gotta save the day again. So that concludes this chapter, so our chapter progress. You delved into the secrets of the Great Library of Fedoria and discovered an important clue to defeating Azura. You decided not to learn the story of Dom's parents. They will always be a mystery to him. Oh, okay. Sure. You showed a stuck-up, arrogant ass of a baron's son who's boss, gaining the respect of the Fedorian troops. You didn't take the anti-magic protection amulet. You'll have to rely on your wits to protect you from magic. I like how these, like, subtly guilt trip you for not buying the premium upgrades. It's wonderful. Azura has crossed the ocean and seized control of Fedoria. Will you be able to escape the city in time to warn Kenna? So the overall progress, so it gives you a list of allies that you could or could not recruit. So we have King Luther, who has been recruited, a wolf pup whom Azura brought back to life um, in her home country, who we did not recruit. Clover, Azura's handmaiden, whom we did not recruit. She thinks that it should be perfectly fine for her empress to drain her of life. Madeline, who was someone who was taking care of Dom while he's in the custody of Hex, the evil scientist woman, is not recruited. She's been thrown out of an airship and left to fend for herself in the mountains. Florian, who was the sort of overlord of a coastal town that Luther had once held, has not been recruited. And then there are several people that we have not met yet. So our legend score is 28 out of a possible 30. Sometimes you have some that you can't get unless you do a premium choice. We have 0 out of 10 weapons. Typically the only way you can get weapons is through premium choices. You have 15 out of 30 possible allies. You have 0 out of 0 possible troops. And you have made 25 out of 60 significant choices is what they used to be called. Now they're called events. So, and your army score is 68 out of 130. This looks bad, but I have played through all of these without doing any of the premium choices that actually get you a decent army score, and I still won, so we're fine. So, we have reached the end of the chapter. You can restart this chapter to try other choices or continue on to the next chapter. If you restart the chapter, you only get one set of diamonds, which sucks, but you, if you continue on, you can't replay that chapter without starting the whole book over, in which case you play through a whole bunch of them that you can't get diamonds back for. So if you're really sure that you made a mistake, or if you really decide, no, nah, I really want that weapon or that premium choice, that extra scene, whatever it was, you've got to do it now. We are going to continue on, but I think we're going to take a short break here because um, I could use some water. So... A, I will get that loaded up here, maybe. <laughs> there it is. And I will be right back. Stay tuned.
Okay, so sorry that took a little longer than I'd planned. I wanted to A, wait for the second ad from Visor to get through and then also collect all my diamonds. I was also looking into whether there's another app I can use possibly to pull the audio since apparently Visor can't do that. So looks like there might be might be some some options that I'll look into for the actual stream. But we're going to continue now with chapter seven of the Crown and the Flame book three, assuming that my video hasn't frozen. Has it frozen? Oh no. Oh no. There we go. I just needed to refresh the window. That was all. Apparently if I hide it behind other stuff, it, uh, it won't go. So that's good to know. But chapter seven, in which apparently we're still going to be trying to get out of, uh, out of Fedoria. So let's see who's going to betray us. Somebody's going to betray us. This should be fun. All right. Keep building your army score for the final battle, like it matters. Chapter 7, The Betrayal. So we're now playing as Val. With your friends imprisoned and all of Enon crawling with Iron Empire soldiers, you hide behind a hedge in the royal gardens. Hells, Val, you know what you should do. Nearby, a squad of soldiers drags your airship across the courtyard. Well, shit, we're going to want that later. You should... Jump back on the airship, fly out of here, recruit some unsavory characters to join your band of sky pirates, then live out the rest of your days busting heads, drinking ale, and drinking more ale. But that's not what you're gonna do, is it? You duck behind a tall bush as a troop of soldiers walks by. Oh, come on, Val, you know you're a good person. Stop with the, stop with the mercenary act. We all know you're a good person. No, you're gonna do something stupid. As the soldiers pass, you scoop up a handful of pebbles. Yes, this is indeed the stupid thing to do, Val. What you should be doing is, like, running away and getting allies. Val, honey, sweetheart, can we, like, not get you killed? We, you know, we can only kill one major player character um, in, in a book. Come on. Okay. Hmm. Which one of these brainwashed idiots has the least embarrassing helmet? You throw the pebbles at... I have a feeling this is going to be a timed choice... Oh, which soldier? Oh my goodness, so many choices. Wow, they all look like variants on, like, if First Order Stormtroopers worked for Sauron. Um, okay, so we have one in, like, a like a horned helmet. We have one of them that looks like every insectoid alien villain from every, like, cheap sci-fi. We've got someone who looks like he might be getting ready to street race? I'm not sure... Another guy who looks like he's probably part of Emperor Snoke's Praetorian Guard. And the last one, I think, is ready for a light bike race in Tron? We're, we're going to go with that. So who do we want? Who do we want? Do we want... Hmm. Should least embarrassing helmet. But they're all pretty embarrassing. I'm going to go with... What did, what did I say this guy looked like? Praetorian Guard? We're going to go with Praetorian Guard. That other... Oh, oh, they've got names. Oh, let's see what their names are. Okay, so this is that other guy. So the, Port the Praetorian Guard is that other guy. Tron Light Bike is Birdface. Um, Horned Helmet is Pointy. Um, every alien and every cheap sci-fi is Grumpy. And the one that looks like he's about to, like, street race on a motorcycle is Mr. Fancy. Um, nah, I'm gonna stick with that other guy. I'm gonna go with that other guy. The pebbles clink off the soldier's armor. Huh? The soldier breaks off from the group to investigate, because clearly what trained soldiers do is go off by themselves in enemy territory. Obviously. That, you know, as usual, you, you've got to have idiot minions if the heroes are going to succeed at all. Ducking down, you hear boots closing in on your hiding place, and you... I should hesitate or attack. Attack. As a soldier steps behind the bush, you strike. Gotcha! And we got a legend point, because we didn't die. You wrap your arms tightly around the soldier's neck and squeeze. <coughs> a second later, the soldier slumps down, unconscious. All I know is Raydan be better be extra grateful after I free him, considering what I'm about to do. 
A moment later, you emerge from the hedge wearing the armor of the fallen Iron Empire soldier. Oh dear. Oh my. <laughs> Hell's this thing is heavy. All right, so so basically, yeah, you pick the armor that you want to wear. That's delightful. You march purposefully toward the palace where Raydan, Orin, and the others are imprisoned. Just as you reach the palace doors... Wait one moment! Why are you going into the palace, soldier? Did she who shines brightest not wish us to clear the courtyard? Oh, the courtyard's clear, all right. Uh, the, the, only, the only mercenary is now, you know, dealt with. Mm-hmm. How about you mind your own business? Excuse me? Uh, I mean, I should say, you heard me, Eggshell, or a thousand apologies. Be, uh, let's, let's get Val killed. You heard me, Eggshell. We're gonna get her killed. All right, let's do this. There's no need for such hostility. My question remains. If we've been ordered to clear the courtyard, why are you going into the palace? I'm going into the palace because I want to, because the Empire's ordered me to, and that's that. What more do you need to know? I don't know. I'm, I'm making probably all the wrong choices. Firstly, I must know how you could defy the Empress herself. Right. Her. Are we going to get killed? Let's, oh, I, oh, ooh. Her. She is the light of truth, the guiding hand. Hey, I know who the Empress is. My orders come from her, from, I should say, she who shines brightest, she who looks brightest. Let's get her killed. She who looks brightest. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm, try, I'm trying to get Val killed because you can, you can restart. So, you dishonor our Empress by mangling her title so. Who can keep track of all these names anyway? The soldier takes a step closer, sizing you up. After a pause, your demeanor is most troubling. Wait here. He storms off, calling out to other soldiers. Uh-oh. Better get to Raidan and the others fast. What? This isn't going to get me killed? Damn! I probably lost legend points doing this. I might replay this after after I'm done with you guys. Um, and just like hold off so that I can make the right choices. Because, whoops. You crack open the palace doors and slip through as quietly as you can. You step into the dungeon where two guards stand watch over your friends. Why can't there ever be just one guard? Well, because not everyone is incompetent, Valentina. Glorious day, soldier. Uh, right. Glorious day. What brings you to the dungeon? New orders for you from the Empress herself. New orders? Her radiance has blessed us. Everybody, like, fawns over Azura, by the way. And this is, like, supposed to be your first tip-off that everything is not hunky-dory in this place because everybody loves her way too much. Like, it's creepy. Please, tell us our new purpose. Oh, God. I should persuade them or screw it, fight them. Um, Val, honey, no, persuade them. All right, so I haven't lost too much prestige here. The Empress herself wants you to clear the courtyard. The guard turns to the other guard. Come, friend, let us clear the courtyard. Wow, they accepted that way too easily. There's not some kind of, like, protocol to make sure people aren't just, like, fucking making up orders around here. Wow. Wow. See, like, this is why you're supposed to have a chain of command and you don't break the chain of command. And, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like... Wow. She who shines brightest demands it. Uh, uh, all right, birdface. The guards hand over the keys, eagerly rushing past you and out the dungeon. Wow, you guys. Wow. Like, incompetence at its finest. Oh my god. Like, no, seriously, chain of command, y'all. Why is it not unusual that one soldier has come to relieve two? This is, this is spectacular. Okay. All right. I can't believe that worked. I can't believe it worked either. So I have a feeling we're going to get our asses handed to us in a minute. You start unlocking the cell, muttering as you do it. Your friends come up to the bars. Val? I must say, I don't think white is your color. You know, I could just leave you in here. The lock clicks and the cell door swings open. Some of your people are locked up in the other cells. I'll get them next, if I have enough time. Your sneakiness bought you enough time to free some of your fellow soldiers. We were sneaky? Anything about that was sneaky? Y'all. I don't... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't... No. <laughs> Many thanks, Val. 
Your efforts won't go unrewarded. We owe you our lives. We are the Liberator, so we got five army points. Who has freed some of the Stormholt soldiers. How about we a drink when we get out of this? But the sounds of approaching enemies prevent you from unlocking the last few cells. Ugh, there's not enough time. I can't see a damn thing in this helmet. You quickly shed the Iron Empire armor, because this was smart. Although, we basically just busted out all the prisoners, so I guess, like, any pretense of, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be here, is probably out the window. You quickly shed the Iron Empire armor as you hear the sounds of boots thundering in the corridor above. Sounds like that way out is blocked. Come on, I think I saw a back door over here. Everyone starts running toward the back of the dungeon, but Raydan hesitates by the door. Raydan, come on! Val, what will happen if we, what happens if we run? Azura will never stop hounding us until we are dead or kneeling at her feet. We may want to consider other options. Oh boy. Oh, this is going to go over well with Val. What other option is there? Stay in prison until she who craps lightning decides to fry us for breakfast? Admittedly, all our options at this point seem bad, but... Hearing boots on the stairs, you, unlock your f you unhook your flail from your belt. Right, Anne? I just risked my life to save you, but if you don't shut up and start moving, I will bury this flail in your head. There's that gentle Valentina touch. She hates being called Valentina, by the way. You follow Raydan out the back door just as the Iron Empire soldiers begin pouring into the dungeon. After rushing through the castle's back corridors, you burst into the library with a squad of Iron Empire soldiers right at your back. Oh, okay. For the Empress! Okay, Birdman. The soldier behind you swings his sword, and you feel the blade whip through your hair. <gasps> Too close! Val, split up. We'll divide and conquer. Oh, okay. On it. You split off, your fellow soldiers running just ahead of you. Several enemies break off their formation in pursuit. Get the angry one! <laughs> the angry one. I'll show you, angry... As the nearest one pursues you, you slide under a table and pop up on the other side. You're mine! He takes another cut at you with his sword. I should flip the table or use the book as a shield. Flip the table. A book is a lousy shield, usually. You flip the table, and the soldier's sword wedges into it. As he tries to free his sword, you smash your flail into his helmet. Stay a while, you might learn something. That got us a legend point. Okay, hopefully I haven't lost too much. You quickly turn and race up the spiral staircase. Halt! In the Empress's name! Mm -hmm. I should climb or trip. Val's not completely incompetent. I guess I'm not trying to get her killed anymore. So we climb. Will you leap up the stairs, twisting upwards? I should fall, climb, or trip. You know what? Let's get her killed. I should fall. You slip, and the pursuing soldier smashes his club into the back of your leg. Ah! You shake him off with a kick and limp your way to the top of the staircase. Stormholt soldiers hurry up the staircase, fleeing the Iron tro Empire troops below. What do we do? There are too many! Surveying the area, your eyes land on an enormous bookcase nearby. Are you kidding me? I'm try like, trying so hard to get Val killed over here, and it's like not letting me. I think it knows. Surveying the area, your eyes land on an enormous bookcase nearby. Quick! Help me push it over! I should push or give up? Push. You and your fellow soldiers push hard against the bookcase. Grrr! I should push or give up. Push! You and your fellow soldiers push hard against the bookcase. Why are there so many books? Push this thing over and there'll be ale for all! You heard the lady! Push! So apparently you motivate Stormholt soldiers, uh, kind of how you motivate any college student ever. <laughs> With a final heave, you manage to topple the bookcase. Ah! It slams down on the enemy soldiers, burying them beneath a mountain of books. So we have the valedictorian. We gained five army points for crushing the enemies with the bookcase. Guess they'll be doing some heavy reading. Wow, is she going to put on sunglasses? And, like, is a, is a song by The Who going to play now? Because that's what that needs right there. Yeah! Now, come on, soldiers. Knowing Raydan, he probably needs my help again. You descend the stairs, rounding the final bend to see Raydan dispatching the last of the soldiers. Val! I thought for sure you were dead. I'm glad I was wrong. 
That makes two of us. Three if you're counting me. Oh my god, you survived? Damn, did you just like glue yourself to Radan's back or something? Although, I suppose we're still just acquaintances. Now that I think about it, th that might have been too forward of me. What I meant... Relax, new girl. Less talking, more running. Behind you, you hear the sounds of a second wave of soldiers rushing toward the library. Really, this is so much better with music, you guys. I'm so sorry. Glory for the Empress! The guiding hand leads us to the light. As you rush toward the palace doors, you catch sight of a bunch of Fedorian troops hiding in one of the aisles. Yeah, these... They didn't stand a chance, y'all. If they're sitting there hiding, like, I mean, unless they're springing a trap. Are they springing a trap? Shh. What the? Aren't those the soldiers you trained? Yeah, but they sure aren't acting like it. Please be quiet, Miss Val. You'll spoil our position. You'll spoil your position? Are those purple ninnies just going to stay there until they're caught? Now's your chance to rally the Fedorian troops and fight back against the Iron Empire soldiers, if you want to pay money. You'll also gain Fedorian troops for the final battle. Well, guess what we're going to choose? I should either rally the Fedorians and fight back for 18 diamonds. Note that we only have 153, so that's more than 10% of what I've got laying around. Or, let them hide like cowards. Let them hide like cowards. You turn away, leaving the Fedorian soldiers crouching in their hiding place. Okay, this ain't gonna end well for you, but whatever. You sure? Yeah, they're just a bunch of soft-bellied nobodies anyway. Let's go! Out the palace doors, quick! You slam through the palace doors. The airship's there, at the far end of the courtyard! You run down the steps and out across the hedge garden. Where Joran leaps out, seizing Orin! Oh no! Aha! Ah! <gasps> Joran steps back, his spear tip hovering against Orin's throat. The palace doors open behind you, and Azura emerges, followed by a host of servants and soldiers. Ah, I was wondering where our mercenary friend had gotten to. It would appear we foiled quite the daring escape. Nothing's failed yet, Empress. Stubborn to the last, you're surrounded, Valentina. As I see it, you have two choices. You can leave behind or in a month and flee, postponing your unpleasant demise for a short while. But my wrath will find you in time. Or... Or... I should make an obscene gesture or insult her Val style. Let's insult her. How about I rush over there, faster than any of your mind-controlled minions can react, then bury my flail six inches into your snowy white cranium. You dare threaten she who... Oh, and then strangle Baldy with his own guts. How does that sound? Yeah, girl. God, I knew there was a reason I liked you. And that is not the second choice I had in mind. Instead, why don't you get down on your knees and pledge lo your loyalty to me? Yeah, because that's going to work out well. I like my idea better. You eye Joran, whose attention is divided between restraining Orin and listening to the Empress. Time to do something stupid again. Want to rescue Orin and add her as an ally? For money? Now's your chance to pull a daring move. I should rescue Orin for 25 coins, or leave her. Well, here's the thing. As much as I would love to rescue Orin, and I really would... I am saving up my coins for stuff for our actual stream. And if you want me to be able to improve future stories from now on, because I will eventually run out of coins, you cannot earn them as fast as you can spend them, as you see. Um, you guys can contribute to my Ko-fi, which is listed right here on the video, ko-fi.com slash aromanticace. Um, about five bucks will buy you two premium choices, and then, you know... Of course, the more I can buy at one time, the more I get for the money. But yeah, if you guys want to help me make these better and not have to leave so many people to their potential deaths. Yeah, well, I mean, usually in a romance, people don't die. But, you know, if we ever play this all the way through, you may want to help me keep people from dying like this woman's twin brother. So, but unfortunately, we're going to leave her. Too risky. She'll probably hold me back anyway. 
Raiden, move! This means that we can't get our nice romantic subplot between her and, and the guy I intended for her. That sucks. Oh well. As you turn toward the airship, you expect to see Raidan ahead of you sprinting up the ramp. But instead, he's blocking your path, a crossbow aimed at your heart. Oh, shocking. Shocking. The assassin and spy, who, as I said, whose sister runs the, the underworld in another city, has betrayed us. Oh, wow. This, this is my surprised voice, y'all. This is, yeah, I'm, I'm so shocked. Hear the shock. Raidan! What the hells are you doing, and why shouldn't I kill you for it? I'm succumbing to reason. We cannot win, Valentina, not against her. No way. The Raidan I know wouldn't just give up. Not after everything. The Raidan I know would fight. For a split second, for the first time you can remember, Raidan looks unsure. Then I am not who you thought I was. You son of a- You leap forward, and Raidan fires! The arrow pierces through your chest, just above your heart. Holy shit, did I actually get Val killed? Rah! Howling with rage and pain, you keep charging. You knock the crossbow out of Raidan's hands, and I should punch Raidan or knock him down? Eh, probably knocking him down is safer. You barrel into Raidan with your shoulder, knocking him off his feet. Ugh! Raidan stumbles, falling to the cobblestones. You stand over him, gripping the handle of your flail. You. If I ever see you again, I'll kill you, traitor. Empress! Guiding light! They are getting away! Let them go. My rule is inevitable, and we must save our strength. Yeah, if she uses her magic, it drains her, and she has to kill more people to get her magic back, so. Besides, her gaze settles on Redan. We have all we need. With that, you climb into the airship, and it quickly glides into the air. Come, sit down, Val. You're going to need stitches. It's fine. Get away from me. Oh, yes, the tough girl who doesn't need medical treatment. Yeah, this isn't a trope at all. Mm-hmm. As the airship rises, you look out the window and see Raidan staring up at you. A moment later, he turns to Azura and kneels before her. Raidan, of all the stupid, boneheaded things... You slump against the wall, slowly sliding down until you're sitting on the floor. I never thought you would do this. But has he, though? Or is he just being clever and working from the inside? I guess we'll have to find out later. So, our chapter progress. You infiltrated the Iron Empire's defenses, giving you enough time to rescue some of your soldiers. You crushed your enemies with a giant bookcase. This was your most literary moment. Yeah, yeah. You let the Fedorians remain hidden. They'll never know true glory. Although they will know some really fashionable armor. You chose not to, re to rescue Orin. Better not to have anyone slowing you down. Raidan betrayed you, pledging his loyalty to Azura. Can you trust anyone after this? So our overall progress is the same as from our last chapter, with one exception. We have added Orin to the list as not recruited. Our legend score is now 30 out of a possible 35, so I must have missed several options um, during, during that fight. So I will probably go back and play this, replay this for myself once I have another key. As I said, you only get two keys about every two to three hours. You have 0 out of 10 weapons still, 15 out of 35 allies... One out of ten, or zero out of possible ten troops that we could have gained <clears throat> by recruiting various people, and we have made a total of thirty-five out of seventy-five choices, and our army score is now eighty out of a possible hundred and sixty-five. So this is where it gives me the option to restart the chapter for another key or continue on. I'm going to choose not to do either. I am actually going to sign off. This has been a pretty, pretty informational stream that I've done here, recording that I've done here. So we are tentatively set for this coming Friday, June 15th at 7 p.m. Pacific for a start time for the first live stream over on twitch.tv slash aromanticace. Um, there I will be streaming their flagship romance novel, which I have played through once before. I was a sucker and bought a lot of the premium choices, but not all of them. 
There's one that I haven't bought that is in chapter one that you'll get to see. We'll all be seeing it for the first time. That will also be when we officially start our drinking game, which you can also find over at my Twitch channel. And um, that'll make this a lot more fun because a lot of the drinking game rules were written based on this particular novel. So, um, yeah, prepare to spend your Friday night getting... Uh, Getting getting pretty sauced um, with two chapters of the Royal Romance Book One. So thank you for watching and catch you later.